बिसमी डियर स्टूडेंट्स असलम एंड वेलकम टू ऑफिस डॉट कॉम डॉट पी के दिस इज़ योर ओन प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कम एंड लर्न एंड वी ट्राई टू प्रोवाइड यू विद द बेस्ट ऑफ नॉलेज वी कैन डियर स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव बीन रीडिंग योर कमेंट्स दे वर पॉजिटिव थैंक यू सो मच फॉर द रिगार्ड वी आर वेटिंग फॉर योर बोथ पॉजिटिव एंड नेगेटिव व्यूज़ अबाउट आर वीडियोज़ एंड वी आर ऑल्सो वेटिंग फॉर योर सजेशन अबाउट वट काइंड ऑफ मटीरियल यू वॉन्ट टू सी ऑन आर चैनल एंड ऑन दी अदर हैंड I request all of you to please subscribe to our channel and share it with your other fellow students so that more and more students are able to benefit from the material that has been shared and will be shared in the future on our channel. Thank you so much for this love and regard. Dear students in the previous lecture we have discussed about some basic concepts some fundamental principles that are related to organic chemistry and organic compounds we discussed about the historical aspects of various organic compounds we also discussed about the modern definition that is related to organic compounds and we also discussed some of the features or you can say some basic characteristics that are shared by almost all the organic compounds like isomerism solubility the nature that is they have covalent nature and almost all the carbon all are carbon compounds having hydrogen in them and we also call them hydrocarbons so we also discussed the definition of organic chemistry let me revise you uh, for your convenience that it is the branch of chemistry that deals with the study of compounds of carbon and hydrogen that is hydrocarbons and their derivatives Also I told you about the importance of organic chemistry and organic compounds in our daily life how they are important how they are useful and how their absence will make our life miserable <clears throat> Today we are going to discuss the most important sources of organic compounds most commonly the organic compounds are obtained from three basic sources the coal natural gas and petroleum because all of them have carbon as their basic component and we all know that carbon is the basic component of all the organic compounds so let us first discuss about the coal there are three things that are located inside our earth crust in to the depths and earth has vast <clears throat> or huge reservoirs of coal petroleum and natural gas from which many organic compounds are obtained and these are the outcome or the results of the plants that were buried years millions of years ago in the different layers of earth and then due to high pressure and high heat they have been converted into fuels and that is why they are called fossil fuels now first of all we will discuss the coal now coal it is believed that coal in nature was formed from the remains of the trees that were buried inside the earth crust some 500 million years ago due to bacterial and chemical action what i am saying is trees were buried due to high pressure and high temperature it was converted into coal also there was bacterial action or bacterial decay that converted the tree or wood into coal now let us discuss the whole process of conversion of wood into good quality coal <clears throat> we will start from the wood now on wood there is bacterial and chemical reaction and it is converted into inferior quality coal that is peat now further high temperature and high pressure converted it into lignite now further pressure 
<coughs> pressure converted this lignite into bituminous coal and then further increase in pressure gave rise to the finest quality of coal that is anthracite now anthracite is the best quality of coal coal is an important solid fuel and becomes a source of organic compounds when it is subjected to carbonization carbonization or you can say destructive distillation it is a distillation process that is carried out in the presence of high temperature <clears throat> in destructive distillation coal is heated in the absence of air at about 500 to 1000 degree centigrade it is converted into its components that are coke coal gas and coal tar coal tar contains a large number of organic compounds and then we further put it in the fractional distillation chamber to obtain that large number of organic compounds now this was all about coal and its importance in organic chemistry the coal resources of pakistan they are estimated by the geological survey of pakistan and it is about 84 billion tons and about 80% of this coal is used to bake bricks in the lime kilns beside some quantity is used for domestic purposes as well and certain conscious efforts that are being made by the government of pakistan to induct coal into industry by setting up coal based power units the sindh coal authority and the directorates of mineral developments of punjab balochistan and khyber pakhtunkhwa are all keen to expand coal utilization in power generation for which many incentives they have been made available so this is all about coal now let us discuss about natural gas and its importance in organic chemistry <clears throat>